Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for this session again. We thank you because of the way you are teaching us and instructing and leading us. We pray, Lord, we'll be teachable. And we pray, Lord, that the instruction of your word will do good in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. That will not become so familiar with this passage, so familiar with the Lord, so familiar with worship, so familiar with the God of heaven. That when he speaks, we don't understand that God Almighty is speaking in a special way. Help us, Lord, to give you the honor, the adoration, the reverence we ought to give you in your presence in Jesus' name. Speak to every heart now. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're coming to Matthew chapter 5, and we're reading from verse 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. That word blessed, actually if you look at another translation of the Bible, means happy. And it's very interesting as Jesus started his ministry. And then as he looked at the people and he saw them, he wondered what will be the greatest sin, the highest sin that all these people will be looking for. Verse 1, and seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. He saw the multitude. What did he see? He saw a desire within them, a longing within them. He was Lord and he's still Lord. And he knows the hearts of all men. You see, today we have to conduct a survey. And we have to find out by questioning. We actually we want to find out something. You send out questionnaires to the society. And then you put these questionnaires in the hands of the people. And they will make random sampling. They cannot interview everybody. They come to this man. They say, would you mind to take a few, a few minutes of your time and give us an answer to these questions? And yes, they say, that's all right. And then they fill it in. They go to this one. They go to this one. They go to this one. And such a survey has been carried out time and again. And the survey is asking, what do you want most? And it doesn't matter. Anywhere you carry out that survey, and you're asking people in Africa, asking people in Asia, asking people in America, asking people anywhere, you say, what is the bottom line? If you could describe just with one word what you want, what will you say it is? When the people don't understand the question, they'll say, I want money. Then they question them more. Why do you want money? So that I can have all my needs made. Then they say, why do you want to have all your needs made? I just want to live a happy life. That's it. Then they ask another person, what do you really want? I want to be healthy. Why do you want to be healthy? I want to have strength energy so i can do my work why do you want to do your work of course so i can earn a living why do you want have to earn a living why can't you depend on other people that will not make me happy what are you saying i want to be happy they go to other people what do you want in life and then they'll say you know the next thing i'm thinking about now i've got everything made what i'm looking for in life now i just want to get married and settle down what do you need a wife for? Why do you want to get married? Then they will say, I just want a partner in my life. All this loneliness and everything, I want to get rid of it. Why don't you want to be lonely? Then they come to the final thing, I just want to be happy. When you conduct a survey and you go all over the world and you are asking people, what's the bottom line? What you need in life? They're going to tell you the bottom line is happiness i want to be happy you want money you want to be happy you want to have your own house not depending upon a landlord you want to be happy 
You want to be able to have a job that satisfies your training. You want to be happy. You want to have a good wife. You want to be happy. You are married. You want to have children. You want to be happy. Jesus saw the multitude just looking at them like this. He didn't need to conduct a survey. He knew the minds of men. He knew that the number one thing they were looking for is happiness. That's why in the original, actually what he said is happy. At the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Happy at day that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Happy at day at the meat, for they shall inherit their happy at they that do hunger after righteousness and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. If there's anything we're asking for. If there's anything we really want, you know, unhappiness, sadness, as a way of making us feel dejected. Ask anyone that ever in any family that somebody committed suicide. They wrote a note behind. Nobody loves me. Nobody appreciates me. Nobody accepts me. Bottom line, I am not happy. If I am not happy here, where am I living? better cut it off and die that's why they commit suicide nobody ever committed suicide because he was happy they committed suicide because there was no happiness go to the psychiatric hospital nobody ever gets the psychiatric hospital because he was so happy then he became a kind of a mental case nobody ever had depression because he was unhappy they had depression because happiness is missing they commit suicide because happiness is missing. And when Jesus saw the multitude, he knew what was missing in their lives. Family problem there, financial problem there, job employment problem there, economic problem there, national problem there, political problem there. The high and the low. He, need, he knew they needed something. They needed happiness. So he said, watch your lack. And what you are searching for, and what you are looking for in another way i come to give unto you happy blessed fortunate favored are you now you want to put an end to all sadness in your life here is the answer i come with good news the gospel from heaven happy are you if you hunger and thirst at righteousness because you will be filled I'm speaking to you at this time on passion for righteousness. In uh, Psalm 17, Psalm 17, verse 15. As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. You understand what he's saying? This man is saying, we were created in the likeness of God. And that is the nature of holiness and righteousness. Any departure from the original creation will make us incomplete, unfulfilled, unhappy, unblessed. Think about it. The fish is created to live in the water. Bring that fish out of the river. Put it anywhere. There's not going to be happiness and convenience. The rabbit. The reptiles are created to move on the dry ground. Remove them from the uh, dry ground and then put them in the river. They are not going to survive. And we were created to be like God. Let us make man in our image, in, in our likeness, in righteousness and holiness. Take that man out of the original habitat out of the original nature and get him out of righteousness out of the likeness unto god he's not going to be happy that's why jesus said i know you are not happy there's no way you can be happy because you are being uprooted you have been taken away from the original habitat from the way that the lord created you now for you to be happy your thirst your hunger after that likeness of god and then the blessedness and the favor and the grace and the happiness will come to your life in verse 15 psalm 17 as for me i will behold thy face in righteousness 
I shall awake. I shall be satisfied. I shall be fulfilled. I shall be blessed. I shall be saturated. I will come to the limit of all I'm asking for. I'll be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. That's why we're considering the message. This is the only thing that will give us happiness and joy. You will have it in Jesus' name. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, passion for true righteousness. The passion for true righteousness. Number two, praying for true righteousness. Number three, possessors of true righteousness. Passion. Desire. Longing for righteousness. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Uh, can you wait for a moment? And now you need to do some reasoning. We'll reason together. Now, why do we work? Think about it. Why do we go to a place of work and labor and labor and labor? And why do we expect and desire a salary at the end of the month? So as to get money. Why do you want money? So as to eat. If a man does not work, neither would he eat. But man wants to eat, therefore he will work. Why does he want to eat? Because he's hungry. Because the hunger will be biting him. He must work. Do you tell me then? We've gone through all the primary school so as to work. We went through secondary school so as to work. We went to university so as to work. We labor today so as to work. And so as to get salary and so as to eat so as to satisfy hunger the life of man whatever he does wherever he is is black is white is a man or she's a woman the life of a human being is to be able to satisfy hunger and thirst and think about all the things we do all the intelligence we put into it and all the research we put into it all so that we can satisfy hunger why do we come to church because all our labor in the physical is to satisfy hunger all our labor in the natural is to satisfy hunger all our worship all our teaching all our doctrine and all the things we do whether we are singing or we are preaching or we are praying or we are going to retreat or we are going to congress or we are going to conference or we are buying another bible or we are buying commentary anything we are doing is to satisfy spiritual hunger blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled once we lose the focus and we forget the reason why we do anything we do at all is to satisfy their spiritual hunger then we have lost our focus we have lost our direction there is no reason for doing what we are doing close it up and go back home because the reason for coming here is that their spiritual hunger in us for righteousness for the likeness unto god for the nature of god must be satisfied what do you think we're recording all this video to send to people to satisfy their spiritual hunger in regions far away why are we putting it in cases why are we having cd is it that we just like to be you know troubling ourselves roll something together put something inside the mechanism and then hear the voice again do we like the voice so much no is to satisfy the spiritual hunger in the lives of the people and if what we're doing does not satisfy that spiritual hunger why do people change jobs why is this somebody is working here now and then he quits and he looks for another job why ask them ah, i was working there i couldn't make ends meet what do you mean I couldn't feed my family. I was just walking and walking and walking. What they were giving me will not satisfy my family. Why am I walking? 
if my family will not be satisfied i want to satisfy hunger that's why i'm working and if the sin doesn't satisfy the hunger i will have to change and go to another place isn't that the same thing spiritually what are we here is to satisfy the hunger that we have in our hearts this hunger for righteousness and this hunger for holiness and purity it will be satisfied Amen. point number one passion for true righteousness passion for true righteousness we're looking at uh, philippians chapter 3 philippians chapter 3 i'm reading to you from verse 7 in philippians chapter 3 verse 7 it says but what things were gain to me those i counted loss for christ i'm sure you understand now a man is not uh, is not mad it's not unintelligent he couldn't satisfy hunger and then he began to feel i think i must have some things at my home in my house here to sell and then he takes his uh, radio or tape recorder tape player and then he says who wants to buy this what do you want to sell it don't you love uh, you know hearing something through that recorder yes i love but uh, soon money we can feed what's uh, the radio something doing what's the chair doing there all these coats what are they doing in my wardrobe if i don't have anything to eat they sell it up they sell them up so that they will satisfy this basic need of man to satisfy hunger that's why paul the apostle you think he was a madman you think he was so much consecrated yes he was consecrated but to satisfy hunger that's why he said the things what things were gained to me those i counted loss for christ yea doubtless i count all things loss for the excellency of the knowledge of christ jesus my lord for whom i have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but don't that i may win christ and be found in him not having mine own righteousness which is of the law but that which is through faith of christ the faith of christ the righteousness which is of god by faith you see that he said why i dispose of all those other things is that there is a yearning within me there is a hunger biting me in the inner man there is a thirst that i have in the inner man and because of that thirst and because of that desire because of that passion that's why i got rid of all the other things that i may win christ and that i will not have the righteousness which is self-righteousness but i will have the righteousness which is of god by faith that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death and that's what we also need to have that is a passion within you a desire within you. you want to be like god you want to be like christ and you want the likeness of christ and the nature of god to so much be in you that there will be no other sin that will compete with that nature of god in your life that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the power of righteousness in my life that's why you dispose of the things that will compete with those things in your life that are very essential and very very important that's in fact that's why Paul the apostle preached uh, the, the Jewish people in Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 3. In Romans chapter 10, verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And let me remind you once again we're talking about this hunger and thirst this passion for righteousness uh, you, you know uh, there are times when you are hungry in the natural in the physical and uh, then you find some kind of food that you produce at the backside 
at, at your yard and say this is food after all but then you have not studied about balanced diet and because you have not studied about balanced diet you say food is food food is food and even though the thing does not agree with your system with your constitution and on the inside the thing is not really feeding you therefore you eat and it appears so full and you're full for a moment 30 minutes after you're feeling hungry again you say what is this i just ate the things you have been eating although it's food but it's not balanced diet it's not really feeding you it's not satisfying the hunger it gave you ulcer but you didn't detect it you kept on eating that thing you eat more you eat more the more you eat the more you get hungry and then eventually when you become reasonable intelligent you want to find out you visit a doctor you say doctor i don't understand i eat so much in fact i eat more than three times a day and 30 minutes after that food i'm terribly hungry again and the doctor begins to ask you what have you been eating i eat this what else do you eat that's what i eat what else that's what i eat that only thing since when I don't know now for many many years i just i just like that kind of food and that's what i just did and then he says okay let me let me test you and then they put all their gadgets and everything inside and they they find out they say only god can save your life your intestines are gone there is so inside you there is also do you sometimes wake up in the dead of the night with real pain inside you on top here at the bottom of your chest on the top of your stomach doctor did you know that's exactly if i try to sleep up that biting pain will wake me up that's what i'm telling you i say doctor you're almost gone you're almost gone we need to give you now special attention do you understand that many people are hungry for god they have been eating the wrong kind of thing that will not give them the righteousness of god you see all those jews they thought this all right self-righteousness they thought that's it and they went about just talking about their own self-righteousness and it doesn't work and they still have spiritual also there is no assurance of heaven there is no confidence in the lord and they cannot really obey the lord with all their hearts with all their soul their food spiritual food is not balanced diet it says in verse 3 for they've been ignorant of god's righteousness they're going about to establish their own righteousness and they have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of god verse 8 but what says each the word is near thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart that he is the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and shall believe in thine heart that god has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved it says it's not the way they were looking at it it's not the kind of food righteousness self-righteousness they were taking that it is the righteousness of god that is necessary then he tells us in verse 10 for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness ah not with the hand man works out righteousness not with the mouth man speaks out righteousness with the heart with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and then after that with the mouth confession is made unto salvation this is the righteousness that comes by faith you know the kind of righteousness they were you know going about to establish isaiah i told them many many years before they were not listening look at isaiah isaiah chapter 64 verse 6 isaiah chapter 64 verse 6 but we are all as an unclean thing and all our righteousnesses plural all our righteousnesses are as filthy herbs and we all do fade as a leaf 
and all and our iniquities like the wind take us away all the self-righteousness you know about it when you were still a religious church goer in your traditional church in the church of your family you were baptized as an infant you thought that is it anytime they ask are you a christian of course don't you know my name i was baptized as an infant are you a christian of course i give money to the beggars are you a child of god of course my name is even abraham good lord you thought that was enough self-righteousness and all that is like filthy rags but now the lord jesus christ came and he told the people matthew chapter 5 verse 20 for i say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribe and the pharisees ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven self-righteousness cannot make it self-righteousness the one we brag about the one we project before people the one that doesn't have the cleansing of the blood of the lamb that one cannot make it in fact the lord told them in luke luke chapter 16 verse 15 and said unto them ye are they we justify yourselves before men but god knows your hearts you know they were talking about the works of their hand but the lord was looking at the state of their heart ye are they we justify yourselves before men but god knows your hearts for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of god luke chapter 18 verse 9 and he spake this parable unto certain that trusted in themselves they didn't trust in the lord they didn't trust the atonement that jesus christ was to make on the cross of calvary they didn't trust the sacrifice the substitution of christ on the cross of calvary they trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others matthew chapter 23 in matthew chapter 23 the kind of righteousness we are bragging about matthew chapter 23 verse 25 woe unto you scribes and pharisees hypocrites I, I, have you ever thought about it i have that uh, when, when you follow jesus about and follow him start from matthew chapter 3 and just follow jesus and see his attitude and see his lifestyle and see his gentleness and see his graciousness